Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how to create a SQL Server and how to access that particular server using SQL Server Management Studio and followed by we are going to create user ID and password for SQL authentication in order to authenticate into the particular server and then we will create a database and a table as well. In my next video, I am planning to showcase how to interact with this SQL Server from Azure Data Factory. If you are new to our channel, hit subscribe. In order to create Microsoft SQL Server, you need to install Microsoft SQL Server package inside a machine. The machine can be your laptop or some virtual machine. But in real time, you want to make it always available so that it can be accessed from your website or some Azure Data Factory at any point of time. And in order to connect with it, you need Microsoft SSMS. Let's say for example, you have 10 developers and all the 10 developers need to query something on the database or they are creating some tables. In that case, all the 10 developers needs to install SSMS in their machines in order to interact with the SQL Server. Let me show how to install this SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio. This is the first link which will help you to create SQL Server on your machine. Install this on your machine or on a VM and this is SQL SSMS. This is the package which you want to install on developers machine who want to interact with the SQL Server. I will be providing these two URL in the video description. Now let us install SQL Server first. Just navigate to this URL and under this scroll down. And under this you have two options developer and express. I am going with express. Just click on the download button. Select a folder in order to save it. Once it downloaded just double click on it in order to install and here you have three options basic custom and download media let's go with basic and then read the licensing terms and condition and click on install and here change the installation location if you want or just leave it as default and click on install SQL Server successfully installed on this machine. In this pop-up you see connect now option. If you click on it, it will open a CLI based window which we don't want to connect. We usually want to connect with SQL SSMS only. On the top you will find SQL Express Connection String. With this only we will connect this particular SQL Server from our SSMS. So just copy it. I am going to paste it in a notepad so that after installing SSMS we will use this connection string in order to connect it. Let me paste in notepad. And here if you see SQL server name is available. So this is what we are going to connect in our SSMS. Next step is to install SSMS. Here in this window itself you have an option to navigate to that particular link. If you click on install SSMS, it will navigate to the exact URL which we are currently uh, googled. So you can go from here or you can directly open it. Let me close it. Let me close this window as well. Now let us see how to install SQL Server Management Studio. In the link, just scroll down. Here you will find an option in order to download SSMS. Just click on it and save it. Once it's downloaded, open the package And here just click on install. It will take some time for installation. Installation have completed. Now click on close. And in Windows search, search for SSMS SQL Server Management Studio. Click on it. And then it will take some time to load. This is how the SSMS UI will look like. Here we need to provide the server name. While installing SQL Server, we have noted down the connection string. So let me open the notepad. So this part is our server name. I'm going to copy this. And let me paste in the server name. 
and leave the authentication type as Windows authentication as of now and click on connect. So if you see on the left hand side, you will find object explorer. If you are not able to find this, go to view and under that select object explorer. It should be visible and here you see the databases under system databases. These are the default databases which will be created while installing SQL Server and just click on this new query. This will open up a query section on which we will write SQL queries in order to interact with the server or database. So on the top if you see it is currently in master database. The server name which we have provided is for local so which means from your system you can access it but in case if you want the server to be accessed from outside your machine then you need to know the exact server name of it. So in order to get it just type select at at server name without spaces and click on the execute button in order to get the exact server name. So just copy this. In the next video I will show how to connect this particular server from Azure Data Factory. Let me paste it over here. In case if you want this SQL server accessed outside meaning like from your friend's laptop then you need to make some minor firewall related changes. Anyway that is out of scope now. We have now connected with Windows authentication. In order to set up SQL authentication which means with user ID and password you need to follow some steps. Let me show what and all items you need to take care. Just right click on the server and click on properties and under properties go to connections. Make sure that allow remote connection on the server is checked and then now proceed to security. Under that select SQL server and windows authentication mode and click on ok. Now in order to make this changes applicable we need to restart our SQL server. Just click on ok and in the windows search look for SQL configuration manager. So this is the one just double click on it. In SQL configuration manager you will find the SQL express in running status. So right click on it and click on restart. It will take some time to restart the SQL server instance. So let's wait for a while. Yeah it is completed. Now it's time to create the username and password so that either from your web application or from Azure Data Factory you can use the user ID name and password in order to connect with the SQL server. So in order to do it just select the security option and under this go to logins. So these are various login which is available right click and click on new login. And here just select SQL server authentication and provide a login username. And then provide a password to it followed by confirmation password as well. So make sure both are uh, exactly same then only it will allow you to proceed. And then go to server roles under that select the list of roles which you want. As of now I am selecting some random role such as system admin, server admin and db creator. And then click on OK. And that's it. We have created SQL user ID and password and followed by we have assigned roles as well. Now let us connect the server with the user ID and password which we have created right now. In order to do it, let us disconnect all the connections. And on the top if you see it is showing not connected. So now let me copy the server name. So previously we used this. Now let me copy this actual server name and then just click on connect. Let me provide the actual server name. Now we are going to select SQL server authentication. Here let me provide the username which we have created followed by the password. and then click on connect. So for the first time it will ask you to reset the password. 
so i'm going to provide the new password from next time onward we need to use this new password so make sure you remember this just click on ok and that's it we have successfully accessed with the new user name and password which we have created now let me show how to create a new database let's minimize this and now right click on database and click on new database and this will open a pop-up where we need to provide the name for our new database just provide any name whatever you want and click on ok this is as simple as that that's it a new database will be created now if you maximize databases you will find the newly created database over here and at the top switch to the new database which we have created just click on it now we can create tables and we can interact with our SQL server just I'm creating a table and let me select the table as well in next video I'm going to show how to connect this particular table from Azure Data Factory and that's it on this video thank you for watching follow me on LinkedIn to stay connected and don't forget to subscribe